Welcome to Eltham in South East London, where we are the guests of the Gordon Primary Schools, the guests of the Progress Residence Association. This year, the association is celebrating its centenary. The estate was originally built to house workers in the Woolwich Arsenal on the garden suburb principles with cottage-style homes and two village greens, which are all still there. Today, the estate, as I say, is pretty much intact, and the association would like you to know that it illustrates why Eltham is the best-kept secret in South London. We are honest, we are kind, we are gentle, Um, we listen. Right, thank you for coming. Thank you to our main organiser tonight, it's Keith Philippa. We have ten people selected to ask the questions, so when you hear your name, come to the front, please. And number ten is Simon Pierce. Would you good? Come to the front. Shall we give them a round of applause? So we're okay. Um, uh, we have a warm up question, and then our sound engineers can listen to get the balances right, as I was just trying to do then. And also, it allows the panelists to, um, I don't mean political balances, you understand, I'm talking about technical balances. And so it gives us the panel a chance to kind of speak a little bit as well before we go on air. Could we have that warm up question, please? Simon Pierce. People claiming benefits get sanctions for not attending a job interview. What sanction does the panel think should be applied to David Cameron for not attending his school? <laughs> to, to link the school with the Progress Estate, you know, they've got histories that are intertwined over 100 years. Um, and I think it's fantastic to have a show like Any Questions in a school because it's so important to get children involved in, in politics. And actually it's been really nice. We've had some um, parents who've brought some of our ex-pupils along um, and they've been really excited by it. So it's, it's been a fantastic, fantastic experience. Um, how important do you think it is, is to bring an event like this to the local community? I, I think it's fundamental. You know, it, too much broadcasting, radio and television takes place in studios. It's controlled. Here, the great joy of this is that you come, you come to Eltham. I don't know who the audience is going to be. The audience says itself we're coming here. It's not dragooned by political parties. It's not manufactured event. Um, we don't pre-select. And you really feel your inner community. And it's, it's a duty of the BBC too, because, you know, people who come here, they're all paying a license fee. You own us. <laughs> And therefore, we have a, an obligation to come. But I love it. I, I really, it's the fundamental thing about my, my program. has been running since 1948. I haven't been doing it since 1948, but I have been doing it for more than 25 years. And the thing I really like about it is going into a community like this, meeting people, having conversations after. I've got to go back to South Devon, which is a long way away, so I'm going in a second. But you get a real feeling that this is a community. It has views and attitudes, and the questions they put are their questions, not put by you know, some professional pundit. So it's important. And do you think the, uh, the politicians feel the same? I think politicians, they vary. There are those politicians who don't want to do it at all. They're much happier um, in the ivory tower inside the bubble of Westminster. Uh, but most, on the whole, I, I'm not one of those, I think politicians can, are much like the rest of us. Sometimes they're honest, sometimes they lie, sometimes they're very clever, sometimes they're not so bright. But they generally go into politics because they are capable of communicating. And if you're capable of communicating, and there are communities, and they're going to put you there, well, my, you know, my goodness, you actually want to be in those communities. And so they like coming to these places. I mean, we've got, some of them have had to rush off because they're campaigning for the election, but there's one or two still, still here, talking, listening. I mean, uh, um, the, our, our Scottish SNP uh, panellist, presumably he's going back to Scotland, he hasn't got a vote, but he's actually clearly enjoying himself talking to to people from Elton, so it's good. Which is great. And lastly, um, what, have you been to the local area before and what do you think of it? Well, I came through on my way here and I came through the Progress Estates. I wanted to see it. It looks absolutely terrific. And then I went and I saw a big area of very nice garden and park. And I, 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 you know, I see lots of cities and lots of towns and lots of villages. I'm a country person, basically. But I've lived in cities a lot 
And I think green space is the great joy that all communities love. They don't mind being close together, beside one another, if you've got a bit of space to go out into and enjoy. Um, and Elton's clearly got that. And so insofar as they say it's the best kept secret in South London, I'm prepared to go along with it. It's not now. <laughs> it's not Thank now, no, we definitely stopped it being a secret. <laughs> Thank you very much. I believe it really is one of the best uh, uh, debating programmes we have on the BBC or on television for that matter either. I think the thing it's good for is you only have four panellists on there, unlike Question Time, where you have so many, you have fewer questions. On this programme we had half a dozen questions tonight, varied, covering topics that people want to talk about and hear views about. And I think the programme, with four different and disparate people on the panel, was actually well conducted, well run by Jonathan, and certainly enjoyed by me, I suspect more importantly, by everybody in the audience. We asked the BBC about a year ago if they'd want to come because we thought, well, we're 100 years old and also Clive Efford, the MP, only had a small, a small majority, so we thought with the general election on, on that might be a, a sort of an added reason why they'd want to come. And they said, yes, we'd like to come. And so, sort of since then, we, all we've done is get it all, try to get it organised. But, you know, it's like you, when it's all going on, you. you you think, oh, there's this, and there's this, and there's this, and this. And, I, and, and sometimes so I said to Rita, to my wife, I said, once there's 150 people sitting down and 20 questions in the box, I'll start to unwind and relax. And it was all great. I think there were about five seats left in the end. And they said they got enough questions by about 20 past seven. So, yeah, it's good. We've done our bit. And the last best question was terrific. Hello. Well, my question was, the progress estate in Elton is celebrating its centenary. It's an estate inspired by the Garden City movement. It's a wonderful example of urban design. Which current housing developments do the panel believe would be celebrated 100 years from now? Can I ask firstly, were you satisfied by their answer? Well, it was the end of the programme and it was quite rushed. But I don't think the, the panel will put in a difficult position because housing developments now are not set for um, lasting 100 years. They're all put up very, very quickly and it's just lots of flats just for the short term. Whereas the um, Progress Estate was built, well, for the long term.